Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise God, Rel Church family. I'm excited to be together once again on this Sunday morning. God is doing great things. I'm excited for what God's about to do in this service today. Listen, if you're on here, I would ask that you would go ahead and just tag somebody, send somebody a text, do something to wake people up. I know some people are still asleep. You kind of get loose. You kind of get, you know, a little little relaxed on another level on the weekend. But go ahead and text them. Say, listen, while you while you getting yourself together, put this on, text and whatever you need to do. We also want to open up to make sure that we can pray for those who are on your heart, those who God has allowed you to cross paths with. I want you to understand something is that sometimes God will allow you to cross paths with people, not so you, you can just hear the information, but so that you can put them on a prayer list, so that you can gather people to rally around them and begin to pray for them and lift them up. And so here at Relevant, we do have a prayer list. It's not just a cliche that says, oh yeah, can you pray for them? Oh yeah, I'm gonna pray for them. No. We actually put them on a list and lift them up every day. And we begin to pray over them and speak life over them. And, and we've seen testimonies come back. And we are just, we want to lift up your loved ones. So please, please, in the comments or, or email us, whatever you need to do, message us, however you need to get it to us, that we can pray for your family. We want to lift them up in prayer. Where two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst. We are lifting them up together. We're excited for what God can do in their life. And we just believe that as we lift them up to heaven, that God will move on their behalf, that people in their life will be impacted in order to show up in their life, that God will give us insight about how to show up with our hands. Sometimes we show up with our hands before we go to God and ask how. And sometimes we ask God how and he tells us, but we don't show up with our hands. So we believe in doing both. We believe in going to God and saying, listen, Lord, show us how to show up for this family, how we're supposed to, how we're going to love this family, how we're going to help this family, how we're going to be there. And Lord, if we can't do it ourselves because of physical location, we pray that you will send people in their life and God begins to move on our behalf. And so I'm just excited and I want you to have this moment where you can share so we can actually add them to the prayer list. Nothing's too big, nothing's too small. We've seen God do it all. And so we understand that God is a great God. And he's greatly to be praised. And we want to open up that opportunity for you to put them on there. Amen. We're going to pray in a minute. So as you're coming in, go ahead and tag somebody, send somebody a message, do what you need to do and we're going to pray over these prayer requests that have been sent in and those who still have them and typing and lifting them up but I just believe God's going to do amazing things so let us pray together Father we thank you we bless your name for the great things that you have done we thank you for those names that are popping up we thank you for the emails that are coming in God we ask that you move on their behalf God that you allow them to have peace of mind that you allow them to have wisdom beyond their years insight beyond their education Lord we thank you that you're turning the situation around, Father, and having it be what you want it to be. Lord, let your perfect will and your perfect plan be done in their life. God, continue to pour out your favor. Continue to pour out your blessing. Lord, you're a righteous God, and we thank you for your ways coming into their life. Allow them to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Allow them to, to understand you and, and hear your message in a way that makes sense to them. Lord, I thank you for those who may need healing in their body, God, that you're still a healer today. God, I thank you for those who might need deliverance, God, that you're still breaking cycles today. God, I thank you for those who may feel alone, but you're still an encourager and a comforter today. So, Lord, we ask, God, that you would just let them know they're not alone. God, we let them, ask that you let them know that you are right there. You're a very present help in a time of trouble. If they're feeling weak, God, that your strength is made perfect in our weakness, God, that you are right there with them. Don't let them be alone. Don't let them feel that they have no hope, God. You are the hope. Jesus Christ, God, we thank you for being just expanded and blown up in their life that they realize that you are that hope for us. Let them come to the knowledge of who you are today. And so we thank you. God, and even those who are worried about Christmas at this moment in time, God, I thank you that you're faithful and you're true and you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above that we could even ask or thank God and that you're proving yourself to them in a great way. Allow our hearts to be intertwined with yours that they may know you and be able to walk out everything that you called them to. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, can we bless the Lord? Amen, amen, amen. We bless him, the Lord right there, for he's a great God. I dare you to bless him like you know it's done. I dare you to bless him like you already have received that which you have asked for. I dare you to bless him like your eyes have been opened. Your ears. I dare you just to give him all the glory, the honor, and the praise today. 
God is good, y'all. God is good. and He's worthy to be praised. So we're getting ready to go into the message here. We want you to stay until the end because when you stay until the end, something special happens for you. You begin to see the connectivity of everything. You hop in and out. You kind of miss some pieces, but we want you to stay until the end. We want you to save this message if it blesses your life. We want you to create a space where you can hear him and focus in. There's something about creating a space that really helps you connect with what he's saying. And we want you to share this message if it blesses your life, because we believe that's going to bless your life. Tag somebody, spread the gospel by through technology, sharing, posting, whatever you need to do in order to get people to hear the word of God today. God is going to do something powerful today. He is Christ the Lord. That's the message. We're getting ready to go into it. God bless you. Bless the Lord, everybody. Bless the Lord. Can we lift up a praise to our King for he is great and greatly to be praised. God is a great God. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He sits high and he looks low. He's up high, but he reaches way down. There is no valley that he can't reach to. There's no mountain that's higher than him. He is great and greatly to be praised. If you're feeling down, he's here for you. If you're feeling on top of the world, he's here for you. If you're going through a tough time, he's here for you. If you're going through the best time of your life, he's here for you. He is God. He is the almighty one. He is the Lord of Lord. He is the King of Kings. He's the great I am. And we lift him up and give him all the praise today for he is a great God and he is greatly to be praised. I dare for you to just put your hands together in the middle of how you feel. Put your hands together and give him a praise in the middle of how you may be going through something. Lift him up. Open your mouth. Give God a praise while you're laying down. No matter matter where you find yourself, I dare you to give God a great big praise today for he's a mighty God and he is worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. That I will bless the Lord at all times. If I'm laying down in my bed, I'm a blessing. If I'm driving my car down the road, I'm a blessing. If I'm in the kitchen getting things together, I'm a blessing. God is great and greatly to be praised. There's none like him in all the earth. Amen. I'm excited to get into the word of God. We're going to Luke chapter two. Um, verse 10 and 11. And then we're also going to hop over to Psalm 68, 19 through 20. We may not stay there the whole time. We're going to jump around, but that's going to be the framework in which we're going to work within um, or around or near. So I want you to go there. We're going to read it together. We're going to uh, just look at the word of God and allow it to touch our lives in a great way. Luke chapter two, verse 10 through 11. This is new century version. It says this, the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I'm bringing you good news that will be great joy to all the people. Verse 11. Today, your Savior was born in the town of David. He is Christ the Lord. Psalm 68, 19 through 20 says this. New Century Version as well in 19. Praise the Lord God, our Savior, who helps us every day. Selah. Verse 20, our God is a God who saves us. The Lord God saves us from death. I want to pray with you under the topic today. He is Christ the Lord. Simple. He is Christ the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this great day that you've blessed us with. We thank you for this season where we're expecting the birth of our Lord and Savior, God, as we we walk through this journey and recap the greatness that you have bestowed upon us in, in Jesus and how you gave him to us, your only begotten son and allowed him to be born, Father, with a purpose and and having us on your mind and understanding how you needed to do things and how you need to get us in right standing. We thank you for all those things. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this moment where we get to go into your word and understand and, and unpack it and begin to see how it resonates in our hearts today to live this thing out for you. And so God, speak to our hearts in a great way. That we may understand your word, understand your truth, so that we can live it out closer to how you have called us to live. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So here we are, 
as we're moving forward, preparing for Christmas time, you know, we we prepare for Christmas time in a lot of different ways. We prepare uh, physically where we go out and we we gather gifts or we get in the mindset of giving back. We get in the mindset uh, of coming together as a family. We get in the mindset of, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season. It's a lot of different things that start to move during this season um, and the different holidays that are celebrated and all that kind of stuff. And we find ourselves in the midst of so many moving parts sometimes that Christmas becomes something that you survive rather than focusing in on the main thing. Somebody say, make the main thing the main thing. And so this message, he is Christ the Lord, is powerful because it centers us, centers us back in on the reason for the season. When we, we center in on the fact that, that Christ came with a plan, a purpose, a design, to impact those for generations to come, whether they understood what was happening or not, he still went to fulfill his purpose. Sometimes in this journey, we get caught up in our journey as far as towards our purpose because people don't understand necessarily how we move and why we move the way we move. And we, they don't really get the fact of why you do the things you do or your perspective and your outlook. But I love Jesus because Jesus never let the people dictate to him how he was supposed to walk out his purpose. He understood. He began to learn what the father wanted. He began to do what the father wanted him to do and begin to live out his purpose in a way that people, they turned their head, they turned their nose at him, they celebrated him, they turned their back on him. He went through all those different things, but yet he didn't let what people had to say change what his purpose was. He centered himself on what the word of God said to, for him to be, and he began to live that out. He began to live out what God had positioned him to do. And when he lived out that, he began to fulfill his purpose. And so as believers, we got to understand that sometimes people don't really get the fact of why we do what we do, but it's not for them to get it. It's for them to be exposed to it. If God allows them to cross our path in that season, I'm going to say that again. It is not truly for them to always understand the moves you make and why you make the moves you make. It is for them to be exposed to what God is doing in your life. If they cross your path in that season. So truthfully, our center, our center focus should be what God has called us to do in a way that we can present Christ, the way that we can proclaim Christ in a way that we can walk out this life for him through the gifts that he has given us. Somebody say amen. And so as we get here, we find that he's talking to the shepherds. He's talking to them in the field. The angels have come. I want to read something to you. Um, verse eight in Luke, it says this that night. Some shepherds were in the field nearby watching their sheep. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them. The glory of the Lord was shining around them and they became fright very frightened. Verse 10, the angel said unto them, do not be afraid. I'm bringing you good news that will be great joy to all the people. Today, your savior was born in the town of David. He is Christ the Lord. Verse 12, this is how you will know him. You will find a baby wrapped in pieces of cloth and lying in a feeding box. 13, then a very large group of angels from heaven joined the first angel, praising God and saying, give glory to God in heaven and on earth. Let there be peace among the people who please God. Verse 15. And when the angels left them and went back to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So here they are. That sets the scene for you to understand that they get this message through an angel that's proclaiming the fact that, look, there has been a gift given to you. I'm telling you where it is. And the first thing they start to do is praise him. They begin to praise the Lord. They begin to praise God. The, the Bible says right here, it says in, in 12, um, it says, this is how you know where he is. You'll find him wrapped in pieces of cloth, lying in a feeding box. 13, then a very large group of angels from heaven joined the first angel, praising God, saying, give glory to God in heaven and on earth. Let there be peace among the people who please God. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Praise him. Praise him. It's important that we praise him because that is how we start. Anytime we come into his presence, we have to give him praise. 
When we understand just how great he is and how mighty he is, there is nothing left to do but praise him. There is nothing left to do but exalt him. There's nothing left to do but honor him. There's nothing left to do but just sing praises to him, lift our hands, give him glory, put our hands together, do whatever we can to give him all the glory, the honor, and praise because we recognize who he is and recognize he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy of everything that we have to give him. And when we make him our center focus, there should be a praise that comes out. See, when we see somebody who is good at what they do, automatically there is some praise that goes their way. Athletes who are good at basketball, we praise them in, in a particular way. Not in the same way that we praise God and make them an idol, but we praise them and we celebrate them for their skill set. You go, oh man, you the best, you the MVP, you the champion, you this, you that. We give them something of honor because they have shown that they are on a different level than those who they are competing with. And we honor them for that. We honor them if we were going to play a sport that they played. If I was playing basketball, I'm going to honor Michael Jordan in the fact that I'm going to pick you first. You're the first pick for me because I realize that your gifting is so great. And I honor that. And I honor that. And I give myself and I make myself vulnerable. And I say, look, I want you to come play with me. And I'm gonna be, you can be my first pick. Can you come and play with me? And that's how I'm giving him praise because I'm honoring the fact that you are better than me in this. And so I humble myself and say, you take the lead. And when we realize that with God, we begin to say, listen, hey, you are great. You are greatly to be praised. You are way better than me. You are bigger than I could ever be. You're amazing. You're awesome. You're a great Lord. I bless your name. I decrease myself. I increase you. I accept you into my heart. God, I give you all the glory and the praise. And I realize that I am not him. And I got to give him all the glory. I praise him. I praise him. I praise him. I lift him up. I glorify him. Even when I don't understand how things are going, I bless him. Even when things don't go the way I thought they would go, I bless him. Even though things are, are going differently than I expected, I bless him because he's a great God and he's worthy of praise. I praise him. I praise him. Somebody say praise him. If the angels, the first thing on the scene that they do is begin to praise him, then how can we think that we don't have to praise him? The Bible says that a very large group of angels from heaven joined the first angels praising God and saying, give glory to God in heaven. And on earth, let there be peace among the people who please God. What if the fact is that if you start praising them, some other people might start praising them. What if it's the fact that if I start lifting them up, some other people might start lifting him up? I remember being at a school dance sometimes, and you'd be at a school dance, and everybody be posted up on the wall, and they're like, I want to dance, but ain't nobody else dancing. I ain't trying to be the first one. <laughs> anybody else? I ain't, I ain't trying to be the first one. So they, they kind of sit up on the wall. They say, the boys, y'all holding up the wall? Like, yeah, you know, that's my job. I'm just going to stand here. But when one person break the ice, after that, then you start seeing other people getting a little more free. And they come out and they're dancing and they're doing things. But it took that one person to come out and begin to dance so that the other people would have the opportunity to come out and dance. The opportunity was there, but it wasn't until somebody broke the ice and began to dance that other people felt comfortable dancing. Is it possible that on your job that they're waiting for you to praise the Lord so that they can praise the Lord? Is it possible that in your church that people are waiting for you to praise the Lord so that they can praise the Lord? Is it possible in the teams you lead that somebody's waiting for you to break the ice so that they can praise Praise the Lord. Is it possible that somebody's waiting on you to bless the Lord? This angel blessed the Lord first, and then we got a large group of angels blessing the Lord and giving glory to God. It may be the fact that God has positioned you where he's positioned you so that you can lift him up and then other people will start lifting him up. Maybe you need to put all things are possible through God on, on, your, on your desk and start to see it happen and, and show up on other people's desks. Maybe it's you that need to put up something in your house and other people will begin to proclaim because you proclaim 
And maybe it's you that need to show up in your family and say, hey, let's pray. Let's praise God. And you start to see that culture begin to go through your household. I don't know. But what I'm saying is that maybe you're the one that needs to start the chain reaction of praising God. Is it possible that God has you where he has you? Because you're the one that's supposed to start the chain reaction. Everybody in your life may be up on the wall waiting for you to start the prayer, waiting for you to sing the song, waiting for you to initiate the uh, the tradition, waiting for you to give God the glory, waiting for you to say hallelujah, waiting for you to clap your hands, waiting for you to do what you know that he's put inside of you to do. Maybe you the one. It's possible that God has you where he has you because you're the one that's supposed to lead the way. And it's always the right time to give God a praise. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So it's always the right time to give God a praise. And so I just dare somebody right where you are to bless the Lord in this moment and lift him up and glorify him simply because of who he is, not necessarily what he's done, but lift him up in a way that you can give him all the glory and the praise simply because of who he is. As these angels gather together and begin to bless the Lord. Amen. Psalm 68, 19 through 20 says this. Praise the Lord, God, our Savior, who helps us every day. Selah. He tells us over here to praise God, our Savior, who helps us every day. And after we get to that place, I want you to write this down. Pursue him. Pursue him. We look here in Luke chapter 2, 15, it says, when the angels left them and went back to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Sometimes God will drop something in your life through somebody that you got to go pursue. And when you pursue something, it causes you to have to leave where you are to go towards what you are pursuing. First of all, you have to define what you are pursuing. You got to have a mindset to say, I'm going after something in order to pursue it. If you don't have a mindset that you're going after something, you're not pursuing, you're just running. And it's not that I'm just running after just anything. I'm running after something that's apprehended me. I'm going after something in particular. I'm chasing what God has put inside of me. I'm chasing the destiny that's on my life. I'm chasing the person that I know I should be in the spirit. I'm chasing this particular thing because God has shown it to me. He has dropped the word in my spirit and now I got to pursue him. We praised him. I got the word. I'm glorifying him. And now I got to pursue what he's put in my life. Some people have shouted about what God said he was going to do in your life, but you haven't pursued what he said he's going to do in your life. I'm going to say that again. Some people have shouted about what God said he's going to do in your life, but you haven't pursued what God said he's going to do in your life. You sang with the angels about the fact that he was born, but you haven't loaded up your cargo to go after what they said happened. Somebody say, go after it. The fact of the matter is that God will drop something in your spirit that you got to go after. He will drop something through a word. He'll drop something through a song. He'll drop something through just a moment. He'll drop something. And when he speaks to your spirit and you'll praise God about it and you'll see and you'll sing about it and you'll shout about it. But the question is, will you pursue it? Will you shift out of your comfort zone to go after what God has shown you? Will you believe enough to actually shift your physical to go after it? Somebody say, pursue him, pursue him. The word of God came to me that I can preach, but I got to get up and pick up the Bible and start to read and unpack it. I got to go get my education. I got to go listen and and get trained and I got to go get, get, get insight and get wisdom and education about what I, I praised about the fact that I was called, but have I got up and pursued what he called me to? I praise God about the fact that I was pastor, but did I get up and open the doors of the church? I praise God about the fact that I would get that job, but did I actually go and put in the application? Did I pursue what he said? 
Because when I pursue what he dropped in my life, I'm pursuing the word of God that came to me. And I honor him in that because I believed enough to shift my natural to go after what he showed me in the spiritual. Let thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I first saw it in the spiritual. Let it be done in me what you have shown before me so that I can step into it. And I'll start stepping before I see it in the natural. Because it was real to me when I saw it in the spirit. It was real to me when I saw it, when you, when you spoke it to me, when, they, when the person came and gave me that prophetic word, it was real to me. I saw it and it was just as real thing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that's not seen. And, and, and when I go after it, it's not because I've seen it in the physical, it's because I've seen it in the spirit and I'm going after it and I'm pursuing what you place on my life. I dare somebody to step into what God has shown them on the inside. That you will allow God to pull up out of you what he's placed inside of you. That other people can walk into what you saw in the spirit years ago because you allow God to pull it up out of you and you pursued him. Hear me on this. I don't say pursue it. I say pursue him. Because sometimes we go after the thing that he said he was going to do more than going after the God who said he was going to do it. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes we go more after the thing that God said he was going to do than after the God who said he's going to do it. We got to pursue him. We always have to pursue Jesus. We have to pursue his word, pursue God and say, Lord, you show me how to live out this life. Because if I live out a life the way you call me to live, then what you promised me is automatically going to come to pass. If I tell my kids that we are headed to this place and I say, pack your bags and I say, get your stuff together and they obey everything that I tell them to do. Obviously, if it's in my plan to take them to a certain spot, when they obey step by step, it's positioning them to step into what I have destined for them to step into. So if I say, look, the plane leaves at at 901, we need to make sure that we load it in the the car. And when they start to load up their stuff, we start to move forward in it. And as they obey each step, they're moving towards their destiny because they obey each step. If they're so focused about the time that we're leaving in the airplane, the airplane is not necessarily their responsibility. It is their responsibility to pack their stuff. It's their responsibility to get in the car. It's their responsibility to have what they need. It's their responsibility to listen to the father. So if they pursue the plane, they will never get to the plane. They got to pursue the father and be obedient because when they're obedient to the father, being obedient to the father will get them to the plane. And many times in our life, we are not being obedient to the father. We're trying to go after what the father promised. And he said, I never meant for you to go after what the father promised without the father. This is about us going into it together. So I got to seek the Lord. I got to I got to seek him in every step of the way. I got to deny myself. I got to be obedient to what he says, because in every step of obedience, I'm stepping more towards my destiny, even if it don't look like it, because the father has a plan. He knows the plan he has for me. He knows how he's going to get me there. So I got to listen to what he tells me in the moment. What have you told me to do today? How have you called me to move today? How am I supposed to respond to them today? And when I start to look that way, I begin to move and be obedient to him. And I realize the more I step, the more I listen, the more I move the way he wants me to move. I may not understand how it's going to line up to that. But the more I move in obedience, I'm positioning myself to get there with him. I don't want to get to my destiny and he not be there. I don't want to get to my destiny and not be anointed. I don't want to get to my destiny and not understand how to operate. I don't want to get to my destiny and just be there all alone. I want to get there with him. I want to be there when I'm supposed to be there. I want to be there and I want to be ready. I want to be there and have the character I need. I want to be there and have the resources I need. I want to be there and be everything that God has called me to be in that moment so that I can walk into it in the fullness. I don't want to get there and not be where I need to be internally, but be there physically because I left the father behind. Somebody say, pursue him. Pursue him. They got up and they began to move in pursuit of what the word was that came to them. They began to shift their comfort zone and go after what they heard from heaven. Will you shift from your comfort zone to go after what you've heard from heaven? Will you shift from where you are to move after what God has called you to? Will you shift from where you are to move in something that it don't even sound like it's ever been done? Will you move into something and step with purpose 
to what God has said simply because God said it. Somebody say, pursue him. Pursue him. So they go after him. And I want you to write this down today. I want you to proclaim him. After we have praised him, after we have pursued him, we must proclaim him. It says this in Psalm 68, 19 through 20. Praise the Lord, God, our Savior, who helps us every day. Selah. Selah, we ponder, we think about it. We take a moment to really soak it in. Sometimes we move so fast through stuff that God has to actually put things in to say, I want you to really think about that. I want you to truly ponder that. I want you to truly understand that. I don't want you to skim past that. Matter of fact, go back and read it again. I want you to focus in on the fact that you need to praise the Lord, God, our Savior, who helps us every day. Somebody say every day. See, we live in a world that tries to make us think that God is not significant. The word relevant means closely connected, that he's not relevant to us, that he's not a part of our day to day, that he's only significant on Sunday. He's only just a part of something that you believe and he's just a figurative. No, he's the God who helps us every day. Somebody say every day. There's no day that goes by that I don't need the Lord. There's no day in my life that he doesn't show up for me. There's no day in my life that I can live life to the fullest without acknowledging him. There's no day that I should go by without praising him. There's no day that I shouldn't lift him up. There's no day that I shouldn't acknowledge him. There's no day that he's distant. There's no day that's irrelevant to give God the praise. There's no day that goes by. Every day he helps us. He helps me every day. And when I realize that he helps me every day, then I realize that he needs a praise every day. When I realize that he needs a praise every day, deserves a praise every day, I should lift him up. I should glorify him every day and truly lose myself and give him everything that I have to give him. Then I realize that, oh man, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Because it's not about the fact that I'm doing this because without him, I wouldn't be where I am today. Without him, I wouldn't be able to execute like I execute. Without him, I wouldn't have the peace of mind that I have. Without him, I wouldn't be the father that I am. Without him, I wouldn't be the spouse that I am. Without him, I wouldn't have the finances that I have. Without him, I wouldn't have the perspective that I have. Without him, I wouldn't have the anointing that I have. Without him, I wouldn't have the insight that I have. Without him, I wouldn't have the resources that I have. Without him, I wouldn't be who I am today. And I realize that he deserves the praise no matter if things are going my way or not. No matter if I got everything on the Christmas list I want. No matter if my wife is doing what I want her to do. No matter if my husband is saying the things I want him to say. No matter if my kids are getting the report that I think they should get. That God is worthy of a praise. And when I get myself off my mind and I get my mind on Jesus, I realize that he's the center of everything and that I realize that there's not a day that go by that he don't help me. There's not a day that goes by that he doesn't deserve the praise. And how many days have went by that I haven't given him the praise? How many days have went by that I was so focused on me that I missed the moment to be focused on him? How many days have gone by that I had me on my mind more than God on my mind? And I got to give him the praise. I got to give him the worship. I got to give him all the glory. I must proclaim him. Our God, verse 20, is a God who saves us. The Lord God saves us from death. This is the God who changed it all. This is the God who saves us. This is the God who delivered us. This is the God who's been faithful. This is the God who who restored us. This is the God who made us righteous through Christ. This is the God who establishes us. This is the God who makes us right. This is the God who covers us. This is the God who gave his only begotten son. This is the God who gives us eternal life. We must proclaim that. Because we have access to it, sometimes we don't realize just how powerful that is. You don't realize how powerful what you carry is. I look in the eyes of people sometimes and I see death trying to grip them. I look into the eyes of our teenagers sometimes and I see life leaving them. 
I look into the eyes of those who come across my path sometimes and they need that life and that life more abundantly in them. And you don't even realize that you carry that life. You carry that thing that they need. You carry a word of God on the inside of you that's so simple yet so powerful, but you discounted it because you're so used to it. But you don't understand that the life and the power and the message of gospel of Jesus Christ is what they need. And you begin to encourage them. You begin to praise God in front of them. You begin to build them up. You begin to speak life life into them and you automatically start to see them charge up. You don't realize what you carry is significant. And the reason you don't think it's significant is because you think you doing what you do throughout the day. And so you want to give them you more than you want to give them Jesus. Let me show you how to do this. Let me, let me help you out. Let me coach you. Let me, let me, show, let me show you my ways because my ways will get you up out of this. My ways. And you don't even realize that your ways come from the fact that you're in connection with the Lord and they don't need your ways. They need your Lord. Woo. Matter of fact, he says that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And they may not necessarily just need your skill set, which is good. Because God gave it to you. But giving them your skill set without giving them the God who gave it to you is counterproductive. I'm going to say that again. Giving them your skill set without giving the God who gave them to you is counterproductive. That they need God. It's like handing somebody a phone charger but not giving them the outlet. Oh, here's the charger. Here's the wire. But you haven't given them the power. We got to make sure that we proclaim who God is so that they can get the power. We've given them the connector, but we haven't given them the power. We got to proclaim who he is. He's a God, our savior who helps us every day. And he has saved us from death. He has changed my life. Depression might've had me, but he came in and darkness had to back up. Alcohol may have had me, but he came in and darkness had to back up. My thoughts that went round and round and negative cycle tried to grab me, but he came in and lit up my mind. He, he came in and pushed back darkness in my life. He came in and saved my soul. He came in and turned me around. He came in and opened up doors. He came in and changed my perspective. He came in and changed my family. He came in and turned some things around for me. He came from heaven to die for me. That the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And he came to make that gift accessible to me. That God. That's powerful. That God. is true. He is Christ. The Lord. He is Christ the Lord. He is Christ, the Lord. He is Christ, the Lord. Mm. He is Christ, the Lord. Some people have tried to make him into different things, but he is Christ, the Lord. They tried to paint a picture of him, but he is Christ, the Lord. They tried to make him irrelevant, but he is Christ, the Lord. You can't change who he is. He is Christ, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. He is Christ, the Lord. I know some people may have painted him. He is Christ, the Lord. They tried to make him into what was popular for them, but he is Christ, the Lord. I need for you to understand that no matter what they want him to be, no matter what you thought he would be, no matter the idea that you created for him, that he is Christ, the Lord. There's nothing else that can separate us. There's nothing that will separate us from his love. He is Christ, the Lord. I need for you to really get the picture in your mind that he is who he is. He's not who you want him to be. He is Christ the Lord. He is the Messiah. He is the son of God. He is our savior. He is the son of man. He is the son of David. He is the mighty one. He is Christ the Lord. He is Christ the Lord. The word became flesh. He is Christ, the Lord. And we recognize just how powerful that is in our life. Then we can get to a place of maturity and say, 
I accept you for who you are and not who I've painted the picture of who you should be. I recognize who you are, my King, my Lord, my Savior, the Messiah, the one who is and is to come. I lift you up. I glorify you for who you are. You are Christ, the Lord. You are not for me to paint a picture of what I think you should be. You are not me for me to adapt you and, and mend you and mold you into what I think is acceptable. You are Christ, the Lord. I humble myself under the mighty hand of the Lord because I recognize that you are the authority. You are the ultimate authority. You are. There is no one higher than you. I submit to you. My will is not higher than your will. What you want from me is what I submit to. You are Christ the Lord. In your infancy, you king. There is no point of you that is not more powerful than me. You are the great I am. There is none like you. You are Christ the Lord. So I submit and I come under and recognize I must humble myself. I bow down before you. I worship you. I lift you up. I glorify you. For you are Christ the Lord. So I praise you. I pursue you. I proclaim you because you are Christ the Lord. I praise you. I pursue you. I proclaim you because you are Christ the Lord. I pursue you. I praise you. I proclaim you because you are Christ the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you. And I bless your name and I give your name all the glory, the honor and the praise. And I thank you, Lord, for those who are on the here in this moment that are recognizing that you are Christ, the Lord. There is none like you in all the earth. You are a great God, a powerful God, a mighty God, and that you are who you are. Not to be changed, not to be mended, but to be praised, to be pursued, and that we proclaim this message of who you are to everyone that we meet and encounter. Lord, if there's someone on here that needs to accept you today, I ask God that you would touch their heart. That they will realize just how much they need you. And if you're on here today and that's you and you realize I need Christ in my life, we want you to pray this prayer that will mark today as the starting line of the journey towards Christ. The starting line to live out a life for him. The starting line of a life that's going to be different. And so we want you to mark that by saying this prayer. Say, dear Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. And I accept you into my heart. I renounce Satan. Make my salvation real to me and lead me by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for those who are on here who prayed that prayer. I thank you for those who may need healing in their body. I thank you for those who are going through the ups and downs and cycles that may be destructive. I ask that you break them off their life now in the name of Jesus, that they will walk up right before you, that they'll experience healing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. We call them blessed. We call them strong. We call them healthy. We call them whole. And we ask God that it be unto them as you have promised and according to their faith. So Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in their life. And we ask that you continue to increase them, open their eyes, open their ears to hear and see you every step of the way. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we bless the Lord right there? For God is a great God, a mighty God, and a powerful God. 
I believe that he's doing great things in your life. And I believe that God is going to continue to lead and guide you every step of the way. Listen, if you prayed that prayer today and you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, please text Rail Church to 54244 so we can connect with you so that you don't have to do this thing alone. Listen, we would love to connect with you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at railchurch at gmail.com. Whatever you need to do, however you need to reach out. And those prompts are coming up on the screen either right now or in a minute. And so we're looking at that. We're excited for what God is doing in this season. God is causing people to be blessed in mighty ways. He's allowing Relevant to be a part of that blessing process. And so we're excited for how God has allowed us to pour out upon other people's lives. We're excited for you and what God is going to do for you this Christmas and how he's going to open doors and how he's going to restore family and how he's going to use you to pour out this message onto those that you encounter. And so I'm excited for what God is doing in this season. Don't give up on Christmas. Don't give up on this year. There is so much that God can do from now until the end of the year. It is mind blowing. So keep believing, keep your focus, keep your hope up, keep yourself lifted towards heaven so that God can be able to work on your heart and hear what you have to say. So keep lifting up those prayers unto heaven because he hears you. And I need you to understand that God wants to use you in a mighty way. Look, If you want to sow into the ministry, those prompts are coming up on the screen as well. You can sow into the ministry because God is using your gift to bless other people's lives. So continue to sow, continue to give as we continue to do kingdom work. Look, we are centered on God, declaring his truth and living in faith. He is relevant. You are relevant. We are relevant. And together we make impact for the kingdom. We're looking forward to great things that God is doing and we will see you soon. God bless you.